like a bunch of weirdos to this, the Manchester United FIFA 16, keeping it classy, class of 2016 career mode. And guys, 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 thank you. Thank you so freaking much for your continued support on this series. When I thought of this concept, I thought it was going to be, you know, fun for me to make and for me to play, but I wasn't sure if you guys would like it. I was a little bit scared, but you guys have really taken to it, and for that, I cannot say thank you enough, and I know, I know the nips are sore, but go ahead, if you loving, if you loving this, go ahead and smush your nipple into this, we unfortunately have broken the 200 streak, but can't, let's, let's take it down a notch, let's bring it to 151, in honor of the original 151 Pokemon, so go ahead and smush that nipple into it right now, and now guys, I know you guys voted, you guys wanted to see three months, but as you can see right here, we are in the August window, and there's four months to the January window. So I'm thinking, let's go two and two. We'll split it up into two months, and we'll play all the big games in that two months. Then we'll do another two months, and then we'll get to the transfer window. Otherwise, it's just three, and then we're in the transfer window, and it's we got to finish the transfer window, and it, it, it would just be a mess. It would just be a mess, guys, anyway. But you know who isn't a mess? In fact, he is a delight. The delightful one, the sweet one, Mr. Yon Sweeney himself, a.k.a. the next, the next David Beckham, a.k.a. the next Paul Scholes, a.k.a. all the songs that can be sung, <laughs> can, can be sung about the sweet one himself, delight, he had an absolutely fantastic match, but you guys voted, and the top vote getter was you guys want Bosu Mensa in the midfield replacing Mr. Yon Sweeney. Interesting, interesting stuff. And if you remember the last episode, we brought in Mr. Polly Paul Paul Bus, a hashtag Paul back. You know, all that jazz. I'm kind of sick of that now. But because of that, we spent 89 million on him. We do not have the funds to bring in John Luigi Donnarumma. And that was your top vote getter. We need to get a new, better keeper in here, at least one with higher potential than Sam Johnson over here. So if we don't have enough money, I was thinking the next best thing would be going for this guy right here from Toulouse, and that is Albin Lafont. He's a very popular, you know, a very, you know, good, good potential, highly rated, you know, he's nice and tall, 6'4", all that good stuff, and comes in a little bit cheaper, so he'd be the next best thing. And I'm begging the board. I mean, come on, man, you're Manchester United, we're back in the Prem. We got that Skrilla. Give me some. Give me, give me some of that good stuff. And I was getting a little bit nervous because now we're on deadline day. And Toulouse is saying transfer offer unacceptable. But Balan has now said the transfer offer is accepted. Do we have enough in the funds is the next big question because we paid a lot for Mr. We're pinching pennies. That's how close we are. And Manchester United board has still yet to give us any money. So I'm going to still follow through on the font. We're unfortunately going to have to trade out Sam Johnson for both of them. I wanted to hold on to him because I thought he was a solid backup. But a lot of you guys seem to think otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and now uh, LaFont is actually going ahead and accepting. I know he's going to be less in the wages right here. So he's a good backup. But I still, I know you guys want Donnarumma. Some of you guys are saying that Donnarumma is a little bit oversigned, a little bit overused. Well, I think he's per he fits kind of well into this one because we need a good young keeper that can we can develop. Maybe in the future, we'll see how he works out. Maybe go for an English keeper. Do you think that would fit it, you know, more well? But if we look at, you know, the track record of Manchester United, a lot of their great keepers are foreign, you know? You got, you know, you got, you got Spanish in De Gea, you got, you got Dutch in Van der Sar, whatever Peter Schmeichel is, you know? <laughs> there you guys go. So I think it would make sense that we go ahead and go for, you know, a, a foreign keeper in this one. Italian keeper, I mean, come on, Italian keepers. John Luigi Buffon, amazing keepers over there in Italy. So uh, I think this is a pretty darn good signing, ladies and gentlemen. 80 in the reflexes, 74 in goal kick. And we got to train up his handling, though. I think that could be a little bit of a, you know, a tricky thing. He is 6'5", a beautiful, beautiful height for a goalkeeper. And we're going to be actually taking up two of the training spots because he comes in at a rating of 73, which is actually one point lower than Sam Johnston was. So, uh, yeah, we actually downgraded at keeper, but I, I'm pretty sure that he is a little bit taller than Sam. I could be wrong right here. And we're keeping up with the youth system, guys. Just because we can now transfer in youngsters does not mean we aren't looking, you know, to develop and bring through. This is the class of 2016 career mode. We're going to be going ahead and trying to bring in some big boys. You know, Terry Brown looking really promising. This David Wheeler guy looking really nice over there. Gonna go ahead and try to bring him in, and we're gonna move. Still continue scouting, as you can see right here. You know, not all the best over here. Oh, there's a couple of big boys over here. Maybe we'll go ahead and sign him, and we're gonna go over to looking at China, and we're gonna put up another vote, guys. One of the um, uh, one of the scouts has 
has dried up so I'm gonna put up four countries over here and you guys are gonna vote on where we're gonna be scouting next as we get into our three matches we had Arsenal Tottenham and Liverpool back to back just all three of them in this first month right here and this is the big test you'll be I think realistically our goal for this season I want to try to get top four but remember this side is not the talent. Yes, we have Paul Paul, but yes, we have Wayne Rooney. Yes, we have Chris Smalling. And, you know, but a lot of the other players are under 80. Like Memphis, I think, is right at 80, 79 to 80. I think Martial is over 80, but he's only like 81. Rashford is only like 74. And then Jan Sweeney's at 77. And then Paul and Rooney, obviously, pretty great right there. But it's going to be rough. Donnarumma's only at 73. So, yeah. But look at him actually making some good stops. Coming, claiming the ball, punching it out when we need it to be. And then the second half, Polly Pogs from distance. But, you know, Patrick Shaq, one of the best keepers of all time in Premier League history. In between the six, it's going to take something mighty magnificent to get there. Memphis trying to get over to the other side. I'm trying to vary up my attacks. But this was not the best match. This was not the best match. We actually had the better chances in there. Donnarumma got in. It was a pretty even match, as you can see. Arsenal, obviously, probably going to have possession lead, but only barely. Had more shots on target, but we were able to go ahead and hold them off. And I'll take that, man. Up against Arsenal, as I said before, look at this. Like, Fosu is only at 72. Jonah Room is at 73. It's going to be a rough time, our first year in the Prem, and I think that's, that's why I was smart. As you can see right there, give him Mr. Paul Pabas his number six. I think as long... We have to measure our expectations here. I don't think we can win the league. And if we get into top four, I think that would be an amazing accomplishment, especially with this guy. We got some talent, but very little depth, you know. So I think it is very realistic that you guys are saying, you know, two months. Two months per episode because we just kind of want to get through this second season, this initial, you know, season back in the Prem so that we get another year to go ahead and train up our boys. So the goal for this season, I think, is to make top four. Can we make it? We're going to have some lucky rolls go our way. We're going to have to beat up on the small teams. Cause that's what it, that's what it's going to take right here. As we go up against Tottenham, can we show a much talented younger side than us? Well, probably not younger, but a talented young side, a young hungry side that we can that we go ahead and we going to mean business. But then we go ahead, give it away. Davis on the overlap, flipping it into Chadley. Chadley into the middle. And that, that is ridiculous. How did Chris Smalling not get to this ball? Chris Smalling, our best defender, one of the best. He's 85 rated, for God's sakes. And that, does Chadley have like 99 curve? How does he curl it in past Smalling over here? His leg is extended. Kick out. Kick out like a, like a rocket. What are you doing, Chris Smalling? And the chosen one, Harry Kane, puts his noggin onto it, puts it past. Don't room at the near post. No one was really going to be stopping that right there. And then 67th minute, we go ahead, win it away. Montreal playing. Uh, Rashford in, goes ahead, holds up the ball, playing it over to Rooney. Rooney sees Memphis Chapai playing it over the top. Then it sits up perfectly to Paul Pogba. And there we go, 69 minute. Haha, <laughs> Banta. There we go. The young Frenchman, the man that we paid 89 million for. It sat up perfectly for him. He took it first time, cross over. Hugo Lloris in the nets right there. And look at that, beautifully, beautifully timed onside. Great little pop-up from Mr. Memphis Depay, getting with the assist. And a lovely, lovely finish past the French number one right there. Outstretches his legs, but perfectly placed low. Not really that hard, but placed perfectly, perfectly accurate into that side netting. And we are all tied up once again. But then, can on him once more into the night. Lamella linking up with Chadley. Chadley bars! But another great save. Donnarumma showing his stuff. 73 rated. But he can still shot. Uh, he can still shot. Stop. 6-4 frame. Coming into play right there. And then 90th minute. Could we get one last chance? Baye flipping it into the middle to Yanaze, who's come in with some fresh legs. Getting over the top. And that is an absolute horrid pass. And Lukaku's on this team. My goodness. What a side. What a side indeed. And not once again. I mean, I'd like to win these matches. I'm just so used to playing... With like the likes of Ronaldo and Messi and Hamas Rodriguez that are like, fuck, we lost to we lost to Tottenham. But I gotta take into account they're just a more talented side, man. I'm playing with far less talented players this time around. To get a 1-1 result, you know, on a rainy night at, at White Hart Lane, 
is not the worst, not the worst result. Donnarumma going up by one, Osimensa going up, and there you go, Mr. Rashford up to a 76. This is a learning experience, guys. We weren't going to hop right back into it and just dominate the league. And, uh, you know, it's 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 becoming more and more apparent. As long as we're not losing, it's not the worst result. We're drawing up against the big boys. We have to stop, I guess, like, I have the big club mentality of us being Manchester United. And, you know, like, us just being, we should just be winning the league. Which I think is a healthy, you know, is a healthy thing. But I think, realistically, this is going to be more, can we get into the top four this season? And... Just something wasn't working guys like the attack and stuff it, it just wasn't chilling with me and for this Liverpool match I couldn't sit there anymore and guys in the next episode we're gonna have one more episode after this and we're gonna go into the transfer window so the next one is gonna be a transfer bonanza I think I'm looking I'm thinking right now I think we should pick up a winger and a striker just for a little bit more depth I think like Rashford has kind of low stamina so late in games <clears throat> I want to go ahead and bring in someone that could be kind of a super sub and then I want to go and maybe mix it up and uh, you know have maybe a winger just in case maybe there's an injury to you know God forbid to Mr. Memphis or uh, Mr. Anthony Martial out on the side and as you can see pretty talented sides for both I'm still in this guy Coutinho Sturridge you know, ooh, they got William Carvalho. Good signing by Liverpool over here. And now let's go ahead and get into this match. It'll be Liverpool on the ball to start off Klein. Going over to Milner. Loads of space in the middle. Gets taken down. For the second time in two matches, Chris Smalling is the one. He's wearing the captain's armband for the day. Lucky not to be sent off and making another crucial mistake. Should have just let him shot. It was freaking Nathaniel Klein over there on the ball and not the not the most auspicious of starts. For the Manchester United men right there. Crunching tackle. Clear foul. Took the ball away from him. Never got to the ball. Donnarumma trying to get to it. And a cheeky chip from Daniel Sturridge right there. Not that happy. And no, I would not like any dip with those chips. And yes, I will be changing Donnarumma's number. Should we give him the number one at Manchester United, or should we give him he wears 99 at, a, at AC Milan currently, which I kind of like. Go ahead, vote in the polls right now. You know, 99 or number one, go ahead and click right there on the card. And we are down one now to freaking, uh, to freaking Liverpool. Now, Polly Pogs onto the ball, moving over to Wayne Rooney. Loads of space, fires it, and Mignolet somehow stops it. A wet mop is usually better than Mignolet, but he somehow finds a way to keep it out of the back of his own net. Then Pogba from distance, once again, the wet mop going ahead and showing his stuff, showing that he can actually get in the way of something. Albert Marino onto the ball, Sturge flipped it up, gives it bad deflection, and somehow Coutinho takes it down. Luke Shaw, I'm mashing the button for him to attack that ball and clear. Instead, he goes and just bumps off of Coutinho. Coutinho heads it down perfectly with a perfect touch. Just watch this replay. You know, I'm doing my best right here, shielding it off, good little stuff, and then uh, Luke Shaw just runs at him, doesn't do anything. I'm mashing clear, do something, anything, foul him for God's sake, and we are down 2 0. And maybe this season, maybe this season was just too much. Maybe we need another, you know, another, you know, year of seasoning in order for us to really compete in this league, especially up against the big boys. But then, with Jan Smini on the verge of halftime, coming in, pulling it across, doing it to defenders, and finally he puts one past the wet mob, Mr. Simon Minulay, lovely one-two intricate triangle stuff between Wayne, Rooney, to Sweeney, to Rooney, back to Sweeney, and the number eight crossbody OP, baby, that uh, on his favorite left foot, remember he's got a five-star weak foot, so he can ping him in from either side, and his third goal in the Barclays Premier League, not all too bad oh, he really is the chosen one he really is the chosen one and i don't know why you guys voted for fosu mensa i think you know honestly i need it and then martial plays it and he hits it right at the keeper we could have easily gotten something out of that but i felt i felt with that with that Jan Sweeney goal that the momentum had shifted and with Rashford onto the ball now Polly Paul is going onto the side flips it over the top to martial Onto his non-preferred left foot and absolutely skies it. Had a shot right there, but now Memphis into the middle. Loses it, but Rooney latches onto it, playing it across. Luke Shaw, no one's going to close him down, so I just trickle in! And the left back, Luke Shaw, 
a goal from an unexpected source. I think I've scored one goal ever using Luke Shaw. But they were like, go on. Go on, motherfucker. Shoot it. And I said, yeah, I'll shoot it. And look at that. A phenomenal strike. On his right foot, no less. Remember, he's, I believe he's left-footed. And absolutely, finally, we make our way. I don't know, man. That is a perfect shot from our left back. Fantastic, fantastic hit. I'm pretty sure if you shoot that a hundred times, you're, that's only going in one time. We get lucky. Marcus Rashford trying to cut across. I felt the momentum was coming. I felt that there was another goal in this match. Could we possibly bring it on? Hit it over the top. Cocker doing last second, last did prove it. Yanaze flipping on the inside, doesn't want to finish, flips it. Cocker in the way again. And in the 92nd minute, that's all she wrote. Close. Close. If we had another five minutes, if we had another five minutes, I think the comeback would have been on, ladies and gentlemen. But <sighs> a frustrating, a frustrating match. An eye opening, an eye opening episode nonetheless. As you can see right here. Liverpool were the stronger ones in the first half, but we came strong in the second half. We were resilient in this episode, guys. Nine shots, six shots on target, 57% of the possession. We absolutely dominated Liverpool in that second half, but just wasn't enough. Just wasn't enough. That's how, that's how close the margins are right now. I think after this season, we could really do a challenge push because we're, we're just that far away. I feel like the touches in the midfield, the creativity is almost there. You know, the, the clinicalness of our strikes are almost there, but just not enough. But we're getting there, man. We're growing, and, you know, we're going to round this off with a little bit of a squad report. As you can see, John Lundy doing room already up by plus three. Unfortunately, Varela hasn't really grown. By up by plus one. I wish he had grown a little bit more since we bought him at the beginning of the season. Chris Smalling hasn't really grown at all. Maybe we'll put him through some training. Came down. Up by one. Not all that bad. Not all that bad. Patty McNair up by plus one. Should we be selling Patty McNair since we actually sold him? Let me know in the comments down below. 79. Not too much growth for our left backs there. And both were Jackson and Luke Shaw. Dean Green up by plus one. And as you can see, there's a myriad of new boys we're in. Plus Mensa up by plus two. How has he only been 70? How is he only 70 at the start of the season? We need to train plus Mensa up immensely more over there. But uh, what I like is he's growing up at plus four in the physicals. So not all too bad. Man, hand up at plus two. Probably going to ship him out in the January window. A lot of these names that you're going to be seeing here, were, you know, they have like decent potential. We're going to go ahead and be shipping out in the January window and getting them the main bumps. Jesse Lingard hasn't grown after growing like a weed in the last season. Paul Pogba growing in the physicals. I don't mind that. I don't mind that indeed. Jan Sweeney almost up to the 80 rank and growing in the physicals. Love to see that. Gotta get his stamina and strength up. The only thing about that I don't like about him is he kind of gets knocked off the ball too easily and that's not what you want in a CM position. Maybe we'll move him to a cam. We will see. We will see. But he has been a phenomenal find. He has the potential to be special and uh, had the goal to go ahead and push us, get us the momentum back in that match. David Wheeler, another kid that we're probably going to be shipping on in this next window that's a nice name though and he has decent physicals which is what you want to see in a 16 year old a phobie once again another player a lot of these guys so what i'm seeing you know shows great potential we're gonna ship them all out get him the may bump sean gross uh memphis not really grown maybe we'll put him try to jump start his growth by putting him into some stuff and the marshall up by plus one has really grown all too much but he's a pretty finished product man i'm pretty happy where he is right now on Yanze up by plus one during the physicals which i like on prayer we gotta start training up on prayer because i want to use him more i think he's a really talented lad in real life and i want to get him more game time in this match uh wayne rooney still grown still growing strong right there and marcus rashford up by plus two hopefully we can get rashford up to you know an 80 81 by the end of the season and what i love is that he's growing in his physicals plus two in sprint speed plus two in acceleration all the way up to a 90 nice and agility even growing in the strength and the stamina the stamina is the one thing that i don't like about him man he's he, he gets tired way too quickly in games and then he can't really break on anything so uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to go ahead and keep him in, you know, keep him in stamina training. But finishing up to 83, let's go ahead and try to get that up. Maybe close to a 90 by the end of the season. That's what I would like to go ahead and see, make him a complete, you know, dominant strike. He doesn't have the skill moves, but he has the ball control and the dribbling to go ahead and get it on and get it on good. Will Keane on book by plus one, Connor Brand. And then once again, we're back at John Luigi Donnarumma, ladies and gentlemen. And that is going to pretty much be wrapping it up, guys. Remember, 
stay tuned for the next episode. Smush it if you actually enjoyed this episode. And the next one, we're going to be going in. And I'll give you a little bit of preview right now for all you guys to stick around. All right. So I'm going to give it to you live right here. These are three wingers that I'm thinking about right here. Herbert Lozano, the guy that we profiled in the last season. Gelson Martins, a Portuguese wizard a winger right there. And a Brazilian, Matheus Pereira. We're going to have two Perez on the team. You know, that can't be too... You know, I can't be too bad if you're adding another Brazilian season. And the strikers that I'm thinking about. Well, I'll leave that in the next episode. Anyway, guys, you know, a little bit of cliffhanger right there. My name is Vimanis. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Remember, stay yourself. Stay humble. Be weird.